Welcome to the Winning with Shopify podcast. This is the podcast to help you scale your Shopify store into a money-making machine. This podcast is sponsored by Privy. Privy is the fastest way to grow sales with email and SMS. You can build your list, save abandoned carts, send money-making emails and texts, and more, all in one place. Plus, you'll get coaching and support from e-commerce experts no matter where you start. Sign up for a free 15-day trial today by heading over to www.privy.com slash winning to get started. Your host is Nick Truman. He's a Shopify expert and the CEO of JustAskParker.com, a global specialist marketing agency for Shopify owners. Nick will be sharing his knowledge and interviewing the experts to help you thrive and build an e-commerce business that makes you more money. Now, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Here's your host, Nick Truman. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Winning with Shopify podcast. For anyone that's not tuned in before, welcome to the podcast. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and I hope you enjoy it enough to hit the subscribe button as well, because that means you won't miss another episode. This is the cheapest podcast on the planet. All it costs you is somewhere between 30 and 60 minutes of your time every week to tune in. So uh, feel free to tune in as much as you want. We've also got a website as well. If you want to send us a message or you're interested in sponsoring or coming on the show, or if you've got any ideas or feedback for us as well, the website is winningwithshopify, all one word, winningwithshopify.com. One quick shout out today as well, and we try not to get too political on the podcast, but obviously we cannot ignore what is going on at the moment in the world. So I just want to say a massive shout out to all of our listeners who are based in Ukraine. And again, I'm sure most people know what's going on there at the moment. Um, But a massive shout out to you guys. We hope you're staying safe. We've all been thinking of you. We're sending support your way. And anybody listening in who's not done something to support the guys over there at the moment, please do. There are so many ways to give and so many ways to support. um, And they're in massive need of things. But there we go. That's as political as we get on the podcast. On to today's topic then. So today we've got a very special guest. And we're going to be covering the topic about how you can convert more customers with really good, or I've used the word brilliant in my notes, brilliant landing pages. So everything you're doing externally outside of your site that's driving traffic into your site, today we're going to be talking about what they see, what happens, and what you can do to optimize that experience when they land on the page. My guest, my very special guest, is Sarah, who's the VP of Partnerships and Integrations at Amaze. Sarah, welcome to the show. Thanks so much, Nick. Really looking forward to our conversation today. Thanks for having me. Great stuff. I'm very excited to have you with us. And like all guests, why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself and a bit about Amaze. And I joked just before we hit record, or should I say famous? Because there has been a rebrand, hasn't there? There has been. Yeah. So for about seven, eight years prior to this year, the company and the product was called famous. We've recently done a bit of a rebrand to really set ourselves up to scale our product out and offer a more rich set of tools this year, which we're really excited to release in the coming quarters. So we decided to pivot our name to Amaze. And when I say Amaze, I will be referring to our product and uh, the name of our company. So I'll differentiate as best as possible. (laughs) Nice. Well, it's just just because anyone who listens in a lot, we had somebody called Bob who used to be part of famous as it was previously known so um yeah if anyone wants to connect the dots it's the same uh, same business and finally sarah just before we dive into our into today's conversation tell us a bit about you as well you know about, about your sort of role in the business and uh, and how you ended up on here today absolutely so just for a bit of a history lesson i've actually been with the company for almost eight years coming up in april so i've done quite a bit the majority of my career uh, at the company has really been focused on product and engineering operations We had some new leadership come in and they really had a very large vision for where we take the product next. And part of that vision was to make our product richer and more extensible through a very wide range of partner integrations. And I I was kind of tapped to lead out that effort. And here I am today. Nice, nice. And I think one of the things I was so amazed about when we had famous, and it's probably the last time I'm going to use that that word, but when we had famous on the podcast previously, is the fact that you can just so quickly roll out new landing pages for certainly for you know somebody in my background and PPC traffic. The better the landing page, the more conversions we get, the more money we make, and the whole wheel starts to turn a little bit faster. So yeah, if anybody's looking for any help on this, there is a link, which I'll say at the end again as well, where you can have a quick play with a maze for free. 
and Sarah, correct me if I get any of the information here wrong. But yeah, you can have a play with the Amaze system for free. And the URL to go to is famous.co forward slash Amaze free, all one word. So that's A-M-A-Z-E free. So famous.co forward slash Amaze free. Cool. Right. I think we're ready to start talking about today's topic then, now that we've got all of the niceties out of the way and all of the shout outs. So let's start off then. So first question for you, Sarah, what are we talking about when we're talking about landing pages? Let's just kind of set the scene and then we'll go into today's uh, in some of the other more in-depth bits afterwards. Absolutely. So really when we talk about landing pages in the context of Amaze and really the context, you know, there's a number of different flavors of landing pages. But when we talk about landing pages, we're really talking about very focused selling pages that focus on a specific product, set of products or content. And these are for us really critical to leveraging the effort and the work that you're putting on kind of that front end ad experience. So these landing pages, when you click through to them, are really the continuation of that user journey to a very specific goal. So when we talk about things like a product focused landing page, those are pages that are, you know, have a great product shot, some supporting content, and really are optimized for a purchase. And that's kind of the beauty of landing pages. They are really flexible and diverse, and you can create one for any type of, you know, kind of use case that you're trying to solve for. And what we wanted to do is make that process easier and take the decision making out of the creation flow and process for Shopify merchants. While Shopify itself offers a really rich set of tools for creating your online storefront as well as your product pages, it, it still takes a lot of time. And the the great thing about uh, you know kind of the ability to create a number of different landing pages very quickly is that you can then create very customized content for each of the different audiences that you're trying to reach. So even though you might be selling the same set of products, the way you talk about those products to different audiences may differ. The images that you use for each of those audiences could really differ. And creating all of those variations or variants of landing pages manually or even through the Shopify set of tools or another tool set is really time consuming. So what we essentially wanted to do is auto-generate those as quickly as possible on behalf of the merchant. And we built a maze free to basically right now it's a Shopify app. We built a Shopify app that connects our Amaze product to your Shopify store. It, it retrieves all of your product catalog data, displays it in the Amaze interface. You basically choose a template, choose the products you want to add to that template, hit the create button, and there you have it. It's created. You can change out some of the content, of course, some of the copy if you'd like, swap out some of the images, put in your own, you know, kind of uh, main image for the first screen. But really, it's, it's as simple as filling out a form after you've selected your products. And that really gives you the, you know, the, the power and the ability at the end of the day to create as many of these types of pages as you want. So in a nutshell, it is a way to auto-generate very rich content for landing pages that you can then distribute anywhere you can share a link. So whether that's on social, whether that's a click-through URL from an ad, whether it's in a blog post or even on your kind of main storefront, anywhere you can share a link is where you can distribute one of these Amaze, Amaze shopping pages. We like to think of ourselves as a kind of a, a supplement and a complement to your monolithic like online store that you create on Shopify. We're not necessarily trying to replace that. Shopify does a great job of that. There's a number of really great tools for building out your online storefront. We are saying, hey, that's great. Keep doing that. But let's also give you the ability to create highly customizable, highly focused mobile shopping pages that you can create for any segment of your audience really quickly so that they have really focused and relevant content. And as we know, having serving the right content to the right audience at the right time is super critical to increasing conversions. No matter where your customer is in their their kind of, you know, journey, whether they're at the discovery phase, whether they're at the decision making stage, you can create a specific tailored selling page 
for them to help drive them to the next stage in their buying decision process. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. And I think one of the biggest things for me about landing pages and making them this simple and easy is I happen to be slightly older than I look. And I remember the days of trying to get a landing page created or or, or even worse than that in terms of time, getting a product theme, for example, the, the theme for a product page on Shopify updated. And that can take weeks, months, sometimes in extreme scenarios, even a year to get some new pages created. And as you say, you can, within about five or 10 minutes, fill out some, essentially a form and then have a landing page available immediately. So if suddenly you find that, you know, your product might have three different uses and you might suddenly find it's been mentioned in the press and actually your website at the moment is only really talking about one of those uses, but the reference in the press was a different use where you can create a landing page within seconds, turn your advertising on and send it to that page to make sure you get as much output as possible from that. As well as I I imagine you guys probably heavily involved in in, in A-B testing. So, you know, sending traffic to uh, to one page at the moment, we've only got one page to see what happens try a different design of that page, try and see if moving things around or putting the form at the top of the page instead of the bottom gets you a better conversion rate or see if more people buy that product or add that product to cart more frequently or in a higher percentage in terms of conversion. If you change the design of that page or something even as simple as just changing the color of the add to cart button. I imagine A-B testing must be one of the most common use cases and quite quite easy on your platform. Absolutely. In fact, uh, we've had a number of customers really leverage our product to help them dial in their messaging. So one of our customers, it's a Shopify merchant with the brand Yumtrition, which is a health and wellness brand. They make supplements and nutritional food products, but they were able to come in create a number of different variations of their selling pages and see what performed best from a messaging standpoint and then optimize and hone in their the the high performance messaging to really nail down a very you know impactful way to talk about their products by creating amazing pages really quickly so it was really it, honestly it, it was pretty Pretty cool, pretty gratifying to actually see firsthand a Shopify seller see such, you know, specific, direct and measurable results in a short period of time with our product. That, that's what keeps us going. When we can help Shopify merchants, Shopify mm. sellers actually, you know, improve their business, whether that is by, you know, this improving the messaging improving the the content and of course our our goal is always to help them increase sales because if, if we're not doing that we're not actually trying we're not actually doing much so that of course is always our number one goal and we're really excited to work with more merchants and help them achieve their goals through improving the landing page and and the selling experience on specifically on mobile that's really where our product shines and you know why our product works so well on mobile is that you know we don't just generate generic landing pages that are vertical scroll you can get that anywhere we actually have some pretty cool proprietary technology that we developed a few years ago that essentially it creates these very rich animations and interactions on the web that historically you could only get with a native application and That has been really one of our superpowers is to enable merchants to create these almost native like mobile shopping experiences in a few minutes. Whereas if you were going to try to code that up or you you can't do it with any other tool out there, uh, any other no code tool out there, you would have to actually, you know, hire a developer and uh, have them kind of custom code this. And typically these merchants uh, on Shopify who are really wanting to sell their products quickly, that's not necessarily in the cards for them. And so that's, that's really kind of our superpower, our differentiator. With our product, you can create these very uh, interactive, compelling, engaging experiences to sell your products in, to you know, share your content in only a few clicks and then share that out with your audience. And as we all know, the more engaging the content is, the more time your customers are gonna spend with it. And keeping your customers' attention, especially these days with all the competition that's out there, is one of the most important things to do. You need to grab people's attention really quickly and keep it, otherwise they're gonna go somewhere else. And there's so much noise out there with the influx of just competition from 
all different angles because it's much easier these days to start selling online. You know, that's a bit of a double edged sword because uh, that means there's more people selling things and more noise that sellers have to cut through to actually get in front of the right people. So when you do get in front of the right people, we want to make you keep their attention for as long as possible through these very native like experiences that work, you know, almost they, they work seamlessly with social posts, with you know, ad click throughs, wherever, you know, it's, we're, we're really striving to keep people's attention on mobile and then drive them to that point of sale as quickly as possible or whatever that next step in their buying journey is. So we, we realize that there's people who are just learning about your brand. You, maybe you want to share some educational content with them. And in order for them to keep consuming your content that you've worked really hard to create and produce, you need to provide some kind of you know, something that is a little different than what they're used to seeing every day, all day. So that's really where, where Amaze comes in. We are able to provide that opportunity to merchants to create these memorable, compelling experiences that they can share out with their audience to keep their attention, keep them engaged and really create a memorable experience for them and hopefully keep them coming back. Definitely, definitely. There's there's so much in that. So let's let's unpack some of those bits. Then I've got quite a few questions. Yeah. I think one of the things you mentioned about kind of online competition. We had Shopify on the podcast, and I referenced it all the time because it was such a fun episode. Not last December, but December 2020, and we were talking quite a lot about what had happened during COVID and what had actually happened in the Shopify market in terms of new stores created, and the number of stores in the UK, and it was similar in the US doubled in just three months. So for every store there was the, uh, the three months beforehand, there were now two. So on average, every single industry had a times two in terms of competition out there, which is terrible news for like SEO people, advertising, click costs on Google, et cetera, et cetera. And so, yeah, talking about competition, I think there's never been a more difficult time, I would say, both easier and more difficult to capture somebody's attention. Um, and to, like you say, hold their attention until they actually make, you know, not beat around the bush here. We're running Shopify stores. We want people to buy products. So we want to make sales. And I think there's, like I said, there's never been a harder time in terms of competition to get your message out there. And there's very few things that only one shop sells. You know, there's always a whole multitude of places you can buy things. And even if there's only one shop, you can guarantee you'll find them on Google Shopping, you can go direct to their site, you find them on Amazon, eBay, they might be reselling through other stores, etc. So even that one pl place that sells that brand has multiple places on there. So I think the attention is, is so important. What are some of the ways then that advertisers can cut through that noise? So let's, let's go post click. So they've clicked on something and they've landed on a landing page. And let's say they're interested in buying a product. So just to give a bit of context, they're searching for something on Google and they're looking for buying a product through Google. They've clicked on an advert. What is what is a sort of what are some of the good and the bad things that you should absolutely hit them with as soon as they land on that page? Absolutely. Well, well, I'm going to kind of take a step a little bit before the page because it really does start with kind of the message matching and the intent of the shopper mm. when they are searching for something. And, you know, that's, that's kind of our first indication of what, what do they want? What's their intent here? And of course, Google is going to deliver results based on the search. And when they click on a result, it's really, really important for the messaging that you're kind of used on your search ad or whatever your kind of title or, or search result is like that needs to be carried through to the click through landing page. Otherwise it's going to really create a sense of distrust with the shopper and potentially really disorient them. So I would say one of the most important things is message matching and message matching the content on the landing page with the search ad so that you can actually solve or, or answer the customer's initial intent that they had put into that search bar when they initially were looking for your product. So message matching, uh, always number one, that is going to be kind of the, the, the first like table stake that needs to happen. The second thing is beautiful content imagery. Everything is so visual these days. Video of course is very powerful. There's some great tools out there that for, to help, you know, anybody create really high quality video for not a lot of money. 
I have a personal favorite. It's called Vimeo Create. And it allows you to basically create really great looking video content based on images. So it will, it's a template based tool for auto generating a video based on a set of product images and some, you know, other kinds of cool things you can put on there to you know, create something that looks very professionally designed and produced. So, you know, really leveraging as many of these, you know, tools as possible to create video content high quality images that, you know, really feature your product in the best way possible. I think, of course, education and and giving the customers or making available information that are going to support your your shoppers decision making is really important. And the only way you're actually going to be able to do that is if you understand who your customers are. Uh, what they want, what they need. So even before you start the content creation process, even before you start designing your landing page, spend some time understanding who your customers are. Where where are they? Are they on, you know, where are they going to discover your product? Is it in Google search? Is it on Facebook? Is it on TikTok? Where, where are your target customers? And then understanding what they're looking for, and then kind of coming back to what I was talking about before with that uh, merchant that used a maze to help hone in their messaging. Then, you know, of course, you want to, you want to speak to your customers in a way that resonates with them. And so this goes back to the idea of honing in what words, what verbiage, even what images and content are going to get the most engagement and then continuing to optimize and and refine that. So it's a, I know this is a lot. (laughs) (laughs) That's good. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of competition. People have a lot of options. And if they don't see content, if they don't see the messaging, if they don't see the images that they're drawn to or that makes sense or resonates with them, they're going to go somewhere else. So it's absolutely critical that merchants spend a little time up front understanding their audience so that they can create the right content and deliver that content on the right channels to the right audience. And then, of course, leveraging all that information to create these landing pages, click through experiences and selling pages to feature all of that content. Nice, nice. And really big question. And it's going to go slightly off topic, but I think it's so important when you're looking at landing pages and you're looking at bringing customers in, what are some of the ways that people can start to find out who their target customers? I'm going to put this into two questions, who their target customers are and potentially who their target customers should be. What, what are some of the ways they can start to uh, to answer that question or to find out? Yeah, absolutely. I think there's some actually really easy ways. I think just doing your own kind of research, looking at other, you know, honestly, looking at competition is a great way. You can also run some ad tests. It's really easy to spin up some quick ads on, you know, these social platforms that have pretty robust ad tools. And then who their customers should be is another great question. You know, I don't actually know because I am not a, I'm not an expert in kind of the uh, audience targeting side of things, but, you know, you could potentially run some lookalike ads to see kind of what resonates or, you know, who, who comes in from those, but I don't know. I, I would actually defer to probably one of my colleagues who is an expert in this area for some, some guidance here. So. I don't have a great answer for you, unfortunately. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's, it's one of the first times we've ever had that on the show because sometimes people try to make things up. So I appreciate that. One of the ways that some of our clients have, have, have tried to go about it is like running big kind of uh, projects to sort of work out, you know, who's in the market, who's an obvious fit for this product. And actually, what, interesting, one of the things I found is basically what you've just said, a lot of people don't know there isn't a hard and fast way, I don't think, to just kind of go, we should target these guys. And I think you talked about lookalike audiences. That, that's where I would start, certainly. I think is looking at, looking at any tools to get some data on who is our customer and then start to hypothesize. Sometimes I think if you just, there's definitely an element of just sort of throwing some stuff at the wall and see what sticks. Mm-hmm. You know, put some ads out to different places and see who comes in and converts from those ads, I think is definitely, a, yeah, definitely an important part of it. But cool. No, let, let's, let's jump back into sort of content then. 
two things that I think are really important, and you've touched on one of these, which is education, so educating customers, and the other one's customer trust. So what is the market context at the moment around those two topics? Like what, what would you say a lot of stores are doing? What should stores be doing? And obviously, we want to build customer trust and educate customers. You know, those two things always drive revenue, in my experience. The only time they didn't is when somebody educated their customers so much they didn't need the tool anymore. Because <laughs> they basically said, instead of using our product, why not do these things? <laughs> Which is a bit of a failure. But yeah, what, what, you know, what, what is the market context at the moment around education and customer trust? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, that with so much information at everybody's fingertips and so much choice, consumers shoppers are gravitating towards the brands that align with their values. And that value alignment is the basis of the, you know, a lot of the trust. A lot, it's, it's essentially the, the entry point for a brand to tell a bigger story, sell their product to a customer. So I think number one, getting, you know, really dialing in and achieving that value alignment with your customer is is super important. I think also the having a very polished and, you know, it doesn't need to be super fancy, but having a, a, you know, a polished page with that is rendering correctly, that is optimized for whatever device that customer is using, that is, you know, that, that has basic information on it about who you are as a company, contact information, you know, the simple things matter. Uh, I don't know if you've ever had this experience where you're on your mobile and you go to a, you know, you're trying to you know, go on, go to a, a product, you know, you're, you see an ad, click it, and you go to a, a page that has, you know, maybe like 20 different products, but it is all in a very tiny grid, not optimized for mobile. I'm leaving that page immediately. There's no way I'm going to be, you know, spending any time there. So I think really nailing the basics and making sure that you are, you know, have a very, you know, responsive website, a site that has all the contact information, you know, your terms of service, if you have that return policies, you know, anything else that is, you know, the customer may need to get in touch with you. And then of course, support, customer support. In the event there is an issue, you want to be responding to those issues, those problems, those inquiries very, very quickly. And then, you know, when it comes to the actual information about a product, images, videos, as much content as possible to give your shoppers a full view of what that product is. Show that product in use in a video. Have isolated product images. You know, if you can get a 360 image of your product, get that in there too. As many ways as the user can explore the product and how it can be used and how it can benefit their their life or whatever their you know the, the problem that they're trying to solve with it, the better. And of course, you know, you want to have some written content in there as well. You know, not a, not a ton, especially on mobile. You know, mobile is very limited real estate from a screen a screen size standpoint. So ensuring that the content on your mobile selling page is very visual with some supplemental copy to provide some more detail that can't necessarily be you can't can't get from an image, right? Other things with with trust are reviews and these are just basics I think most most merchants know at this point is customer reviews are important, user generated content is important, creating that sense of authenticity through other customers and showing the community of customers that you've created is a really great way to you know develop authenticity. Authenticity is really important for trust and I think uh, there's no better way to create that than by showing the great experience other shoppers and customers have had with your product. Yeah, nice, nice. And I think one of the one of the challenges we get, though, you know, completely agree with everything you said, and you've mentioned about as much content as possible and some really good examples of it. One of the challenges, though, does start to become how do we organize this on the page from a sort of mm -hmm. UX design how can people address that? Because otherwise you're going to end up with these enormous pages. They take forever to load, like you said. How do we organize some of those things? Yeah. So actually, you don't have to worry about organizing those things with uh, Amaze, Amaze Free. We do all that for you. I thought you might uh, say that. <laughs> yeah. So, so we have a very robust library of templates. 
we have, mm. you know, we have an amazing team of template designers that really know the space, are experts in selling page optimization, and they they have done the hard work of figuring out the best way to lay out and organ and organize content on the page. I will say that for our selling pages and landing pages, we keep them very focused. We don't want to show hundreds of products. We don't even want to show 20 products. We want to be very focused on a specific set of products, single or say up to like five or six. Again, we don't want to be replacing your online storefront that you've created with Shopify or on Shopify. We want to be a supplement to that. Mm. Uh, We want to be more, you know, providing a more focused experience with more relevant content to your specific audience that you're targeting so that they are more likely to actually, you know, either make the purchase or move to that next stage in the selling process. And our templates are all designed and optimized to drive towards that. What we bring to the table is, again, taking the thinking out of it. We've done all of that for you from a layout and a content organization standpoint. So what I will say is uh, keep it keep it simple, keep it focused. And that's the, the first step. Nice. And obviously, you guys have done all the hard work. So you just sort of plug it in, click go and start sending traffic in, I guess, is the, uh, is the final stage. Exactly. And so, again, it's really all about where you distribute or where you share out your published link. And so that can be anywhere, where, anywhere your audience is. And that's that, you know, we can be pretty, pretty like agnostic. You can post this URL to, like I said, a search ad, a display ad. We even have QR codes. So for your published page, in addition to the URL, you get a QR code. So if you are doing, I don't know, maybe you have uh, an actual like physical store and you want to have in-store experiences and, and create a digital experience to kind of bridge the gap between the physical and the digital world, you can do that with Amazefree. Just, you know, Take that QR code, print it out, put it in your store. And as your shoppers are in store, they can scan that QR code and get this digital experience to supplement their in-store experience as well. And there's really no limit to where you can share your link. Pretty pretty flexible, which is really uh, powerful in terms of enabling sellers to sell their product anywhere. Nice, nice. And I mean, I love the idea that it's so easy as well. I mean, like I said, right at the start, it used to take so long to get developers to set up landing pages for us. And then you find yourself in meetings about designs and layouts. And I used to sometimes sit there just playing devil's advocate um, in the conversation when people used to say, should we make it do this or this? Or which one's going to be better? And I sort of just always muttered, well, the one that makes you more money. Like, I don't really care mm-hmm. what it looks like as long as as long as it works. You know, like, obviously, I don't want it to look bad because I think that won't work. But it's, I, I think sometimes we can get very precious over brand and, and how we want things to go. And we've certainly had clients in the past, and I'll say in the past because I know some of my clients listen to this. But in the past, we've had clients who, they're so precious over things like, oh, we don't want to say that. Oh, we'd never use that color. And we, we sort of challenge them a little bit and say, well, you only exist for your brand. So actually, if you use something like, you know, like a maze or um, any other tool to start building landing pages, then actually the ones that work best are the ones that make you money. And mm-hmm. I think that that has to be the most important thing. I'm not saying we should have no fun in life. I'm just saying that it, it, it needs it needs to work effectively because all of you guys listening right now, you're running e-commerce stores, you know, you're spending money on products, you're spending money on advertising, you need to make a return from that. And so I think it's really, really important to, uh, to make sure we do. And um, possibly final question, with a maze, how do you track how things are going? Like, are you going to end up with five versions in analytics of each product URL or does it still stick them together? Like how, how does the tracking side of things work or, or how can it work? You know, what are some of the options? Sellers use a variety of different analytics tools. And what we want to do is enable them to use whatever analytics tools that they're currently using. So we can, uh, you can uh, append a, like a UTM code or add in a Google Analytics tracking ID, embed that into the published page. And then you can, you know, kind of track it, uh, track it using those, the tools you're already using. We are developing our own that we expect to have, you know, it's going to be later, I think later this year, early next year, we need to check with the product team exactly on where it is in the roadmap. But we do completely understand the need to see a more detailed and granular analytics for things like, you know, 
where are customers tapping? Where are they kind of exiting on the page? So we're actually developing our own uh, analytics to track those kinds of actions and display them within our products. So that is certainly in, in I'll say it's on the roadmap and will be coming <laughs> famous, in the future. Famous last words always. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So just from a technical standpoint, what we generate, what, what Amaze Free generates are single page websites to kind of break it down to its most uh, basic kind of basic form. And historically doing things like page view or screen view tracking is, is difficult on single page websites because it's a single page. And so we do have to develop some proprietary and custom analytics to do click tracking and other types of engagement tracking on on that single page website that is generated by our platform. Nice, nice. I mean, the, the main reason I ask is, is exactly why you've just explained at the end then. When you're running landing pages, one of the biggest things I'd recommend everybody keeps a very close eye on is which bits work well and which bits don't. So if you find that lots of people are adding to basket but not buying or lots of people are clicking through and then jumping off, you might find that actually like the delivery cost, for example, which is if we didn't listen last week, go and check out last week's episode as well. We were talking about some of the things that really turn customers off. One of them is where they get shocked by delivery costs when they reach the checkout. And so, again, if you find people are leaving the checkout, go and look at the checkout page and see what would cause somebody to not want to continue from this stage. Loads and loads of potential there. And like I said, right at the start, famous.co forward slash amaze free to go and have a little play with these guys with their tool and have a little play and see if you can start increasing conversion rates and start converting more customers. Well, Sarah, it's been amazing having you on the show today. Thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. And yeah, it was a fun conversation. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah, go and check out their tool. For anybody else listening, please, as I said right at the start, please do support Ukraine. They need our help right now. It's the only time I've ever got political on the podcast, but please go and support them. And until next time, we'll be back again next week. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening to today's podcast. You can subscribe to our weekly newsletter for exclusive offers at winningwithshopify.com. And don't forget to check out our Facebook group by searching for Winning with Shopify on Facebook. Over and out. Thank you.